On her wedding day, Diana's grace and beauty captivated the world. The 20-year-old bride was everybody's dream of a fairy tale princess. and they went on watching her. She became the most photographed and easily the most recognizable women in the world. She had no experience of royal life, her future lay in the hand of her husband Charles, the man destined to become king. Over a few months after the royal wedding, she consolidated her relationship with the public both home and overseas. On Walkabout with Charles, she was always a huge hit with the people. Diana brought to the image of royalty a unique and personal blend of style, dignity, and glamour. And in today's video we are going to look at Diana's most beautiful jewelries, and who are the current owners of this magnificent collection. So. Let's begin. Her Royal Highness Diana, the Princess of Wales engagement ring may now be loved by many people, but back when it was chosen it caused quite a bit of controversy. Even though her sapphire sent a stone with the diamonds surrounding it broke from the more traditional diamond ring, that wasn't what people had an issue with. Instead the problem was that it came from a catalogue. Most royals have engagement rings that were custom made, which makes sure that their engagement rings are a one of a kind, and that they are more special. For example, Prince Harry took six months to design then Miss Meghan Markle's engagement ring. The center diamond is from Botswana, where he took her when they were dating for about three to four weeks. The ring has two other diamonds, one each side and these were from his mother's jewelry collection. So for Prince Charles, the future king, to just buy one from a catalogue obviously looked dodgy. So anyone that had £28,000 could have the same ring as who was thought to be the future Queen of England. Before Diana's tragic car accident in which she passed away in 1997, Diana made sure that she pass her jewelry collection down to her sons Prince William and Prince Harry. Prince Harry was actually the one to initially take their mother's engagement ring. However once his brother Prince William was thinking about proposing to then Catherine Middleton, Prince Harry let his big brother have their late mother's engagement ring. The Duke of Cambridge explained how he felt about Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge carrying on Diana's legacy. He said, it's my mother's engagement ring and it's very special to me, as Kate is very special to me now as well. It was only right the two were put together. It was my way of making sure mother didn't miss out on today and the excitement of the future. Ninth on our list is the Prince of Wales crest. It was a gift from Prince Charles during their wedding. The three feathered crest embellished with diamonds set on gold, and made as a pendant on a diamond necklace was remarkable. Diana loved this particular jewel and she wears them more often to show her affection to her husband. When Charles gave her a pair of emerald earrings, Diana adopted the necklace and added emerald drop on the pendant. Today that pendant with an emerald drop was given to Camilla Duchess of Cornwall including the pair of emerald earrings. Previously the mistress and now the second wife of Charles. Eighth on our list, is the Swan Lake Necklace. In 1997 Diana attended a royal gala performance of Swan Lake, wearing a necklace borrowed from the royal jeweler Garrett. It contains diamonds and South Sea pearls. Diana had hoped to own the necklace with matching set of earrings which had yet to be made. Nicknamed as the Swan Lake Necklace, 
It had became famous in the auctioned world, and the last time it was sold in an auction, it was able to fetch $12 million. The reason this particular piece became famous is because, it was the last piece of necklace that Diana had worn prior to her fatal car accident in 1997. Another fabulous royal gem of Princess Diana is the Sri Lankan's sapphire, the size of a duck's egg, set in a double row of diamonds. It was a gift from Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. Diana wore it on her shoulder to a banquet in Hampton Court in 1982. Later the brooch was changed to be a centerpiece of an elaborate choker. The seven strings of pearls held it in place, worn with sapphire earrings. This was a spectacular combination. Diana was not really a brooch person, it does not go well with her own clothing style, so she turned this brooch into a necklace and had it strung on pearls and it almost became her trademark. In a way it was kinda meld on the two families. The pearls is a Spencer trademark and the blue sapphire coming from the royal family, and she brought Ugit together and made it her own. As Diana developed her own style and her own life, she already understood how to wear her jewelry to express her individuality and her personal style, but she wore it with flair and panache in unexpected ways. Charles and Diana visited the White House in November 1985. The couple were guests of President Ronald Reagan and his wife Nancy. Diana wore the sapphire choker with the midnight blue velvet gown designed by Victory Dylstein. President Reagan recalled the evening in an interview. He had uh, invited for that particular dinner at the White House uh, a group of people who uh, themselves were stars in whatever their activity was, very prominent and well-known people. I'd had an opportunity at a dinner to uh, here of what she thought about some of particularly the performing stars that were there. So the dancing began, but yet uh, she was the center of attention. The, the rest of the people were pretty much of a, an audience. So I managed to get word to John Travolta. She had uh, mentioned approvingly during, uh, during dinner to ask her to dance. He did, and uh, well, they danced beautifully together, and it was uh, uh, it was a kind of high spot that I do remember in that entire evening. Sixth in our list is the Art Deco Emerald and Diamond Choker. The Emerald Choker itself was originally gifted to Queen Mary by the Ladies of India in 1911 which was given to Diana on a lifetime loan by Queen Elizabeth II shortly after her wedding to Charles. And in 1985, pictures of Princess Diana and Prince Charles dancing together in Melbourne, during their tour of Australia, made headlines. People were happy to see them dancing, but more importantly, they were further proof of Diana's style icon status. For the evening, the princess wore a green one-shoulder gown, which she paired with diamond and emerald earrings and what appeared to be a matching headband, except it wasn't. Purely by accident, she fitted a choker necklace over her head, and loved the effect so much, she kept it there. It showed that she didn't take them too seriously, she obviously enjoyed and loved wearing jewelry, and she wore them beautifully. But there was a slight reverence which was so much part of her personal style, she loved to play around with them and I think that had a huge impact on fashion and on jewelry wearing throughout the 80s. Fifth on our list are the pearls. In 1991 Diana made a solo tour of Pakistan, she had grown adept of sending outspoken signals of loneliness. Knowing that earrings draw attention to the face she chose her largest bear, the wedding gift from the Emir of Qatar. She had worn the ornate diamond and pearl drop earrings many times. 
Diana and another pair of pearl earrings, a wedding gift from the Spencer family jeweler, Collingwood. She wore this with her lovers not Tiara, and with the King Faisal diamond necklace loaned by the Queen. In 1993 after her separation from Charles, Diana attended an English national ballet performance at Her Majesty's Theatre in London. But Diana's life half in and half out of the royal family was brought with difficulties. At this stage, she was trying to work out the delicate balance in her new life. She underlines her still royal status by wearing multi strands of pearls around her neck. In a style reminiscent of Queen Alexandra herself, a former Princess of Wales. What I think that is very interesting was that she echoed the style of Princess Alexandra who was one of the elegant princesses of Wales in British history. It was very beautiful and it was very elegant of her to do that and of course very, very romantic. In the early 90s Diana's love for pearl chokers inherited from the Spencer family created a new fashion trend. She almost started single-handedly what was called the new romantic greys. And that pearl choker became a badge, a symbol of the new romantic look for her high crust collars, the wonderful frills she wore. The pearls really played into that extremely, extremely well. Princesses and potentates shower the bride with gifts. The most expensive was this wonderful suite of Burmese sapphire from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. The suite included earrings, bracelet, watch, ring, and a large pendant. Diana had the set altered to make a necklace, a choker on a velvet band, interchange sets of earrings, and a headband. She was very fond of the sapphire and diamond suite that she received as a wedding gift from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Um, and she really enjoyed wearing that. And I think that was very important for her. As a, as a young girl, she had to suddenly take on this cloak of grandeur and splendor. And um, the jewels certainly helped her to do that. And she wore them, she wore them beautifully. And she also brought something light and fresh and young to fine jewellery, which we haven't seen in, in, in England for a very long time. In 1996, Diana wore this 11-string pearl choker with the Saudi earrings dressed by Versace. She was a confident woman during a visit to the United States for a charity event. The Saudi jewels were among Diana's favorites. On this occasion in Washington, she wore the diamond and sapphire Saudi watch. Cardiff 1981. And a nervous young princess of Wales wearing her Saudi sapphires is about to make her speech to the people of Wales. It's a great pleasure for me to come to Wales and to its capital, Cardiff. I look forward to returning many times in the future. And also, I'd like to just add how proud I am to be princess of such a wonderful place and the Welsh people who are very special to me. Thank you. In November of 1986, Prince Charles and Princess Diana moved their tour from Qatar to Oman to visit the Sultan in his palace and the people of Oman. His austere appearance suggested a man of tradition tastes, but he was a host who really knew how to please his guest. Diana received a suite of remarkable jewels. At first Buckingham Palace denied they had received these extravagant gifts. Lavish presents from the wealthy are not new to members of the royal family who are accustomed of receiving them. Diana was delighted with her very valuable gift from the Sultan of Oman. The style suggested the crescent moon symbol of Islamic faith but the setting of the necklace, bracelet, and earrings was strikingly modern. A year later during a tour of Germany Diana unveiled her priceless Omani jewels. She wore the velvet dress in which she danced at the White House, a Spencer tiara was held in place by her upswept hair. With their marriage under strain the royal couple were flying the flag for Britain. 
Second on our list is the Spencer Tiara. Formed of different pieces, the center element was a wedding gift to Cynthia, this Countess Montague who left the pieces to Lady Sarah in 1875. Four matching pieces from Garrett's were added on in 1937 to create the tiara we see today. Princess Diana continued to wear the Spencer tiara frequently after her wedding, as alternative to Queen Mary's lover's knot tiara. The tiara was worn for banquets, state dinners, royal tours, and many iconic portraits, on loan to the Princess of Wales from her father. The state opening of the Parliament is a special event in the Royal Calendar. In 1984 Diana wearing her Spencer tiara with her hair piled high. Joined the Queen and Prince Charles for this very formal occasion. She was criticized for upstaging the Queen, the star of this show. And first on our list, is the Lover's Knot Tiara. Based on the Grand Duchess Vladimir's Tiara, Queen Mary designed a stunning tiara which the Queen gave to Diana as a wedding present. Known as the Lover's Knot Tiara it was made in 1914 by Garrett's to Queen Mary's own design. Diana wore it on various state occasions and many foreign tours, In 1989, Diana wore the lover's knot in Hong Kong with her white pearl encrusted Elvis Presley style dress and jacket by Catherine Walker. At the beginning, of course, Diana wore the lover's knot tiara in quite conventional ways for conventional occasions, just when you would expect her to wear it and how you would expect her to wear it. And then suddenly she appeared in Hong Kong in that magnificent Elvis pearl encrusted outfit with the Lover's Knot tiara. And again, we saw Diana's skill at just delivering the unexpected. It was to Kensington Palace that her coffin was taken. During her life, she had used her home in London from where she attended so many occasions as the People's Princess. to remember that when Diana appeared in public wearing those grand royal jewels it was a it was an amazing vision and it was something that we hadn't seen in England for a very long time we hadn't seen that kind of glamour and particularly we hadn't seen the combination of such youth with such great and splendid jewelry she brought a, a youth and a freshness to jewelry wherever she went she brought a radiance into people's lives. Her image will never be forgotten. She was radiant. She was quite an exceptional person. And you know, all the jewels in the world cannot make somebody shine if they do not shine themselves. Diana was somebody who, without the diamonds, was also a shining light. And to me, she brought a lot to the royal family. And I think we should think of her legacy as something very sweet and strong.